Uh, so um, we, already, we already saw this. We go to apps and we see all of the, um, all of the uh, uh, Tuxedo Workflow 2 applications. All rated five out of five stars and I don't rate my own application so I do have some friends out there in the world. Um, and uh, and, um, and uh, showed you the analysis uh, panel and uh, I showed you the stage data so we're, we're a little bit ahead now. And so top hat and this is where, where uh, you know we would stop and drop into the discovery environment and run top hat. Now we've already done that so I'll just tell you a little bit more about Top Hat, uh, how it's working. So right now we're supporting Top Hat uh, 2.05, um, and it's a fast splice junction mapper for RNA seq reads. Uses bow tie, um, and the the real trick here is it's an iter iterative aligner. First, it just it just looks for things that align reads that align to the genome. It's going to find some reads that don't align to the genome, and there's a couple of explanations for why a read doesn't align to the genome. One is that um, it's some it's 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 low quality read that that, that has a lot of uh, uh, mistakes in it. Another one is that it's not aligning to the genome because it's not derived from the genome. And another uh, another one is it's not it's not aligning to the genome because this is actually sequenced from the transcriptome. Transcriptome is made up of spliced messenger RNAs and other things, so it's actually split across a thing. Uh, originally, Bowtie wasn't smart enough to to figure that out. But what Top Hat does is it takes pieces of the reads by default 20 nucleotides in length and aligns those. If it finds two pieces that align in a monotonically increasing way, it says, oh, I found a splice junction and it remembers those splice junctions and that's encoded in the output. And that's what Cufflinks uses downstream. Uh, so this is one of many applications for aligning um, short sequence reads uh, to the reference genome. Uh, you've, you've probably, many of you have probably heard of the Burroughs Wheeler aligner, which is an alternative that, that also aligns reads and, and emits BAM files. Uh, there are other, others out there too. Um, uh, you know, each of them has their own merits and benefits, and um, we encourage uh, computationally savvy people to incorporate those into the discovery environment because everybody with an iClient account, account, that's everybody in this room, is empowered to integrate any application they want into the discovery environment. Uh, except for things with graphical user interfaces because that doesn't really work um, right now. Uh, so uh, once Top Hat is run, uh, we, get, we get these sequence alignments encoded in BAM formats. And I mentioned those bed files to you. So this is, this is uh, uh, the integrated genome viewer, viewer out, of the, out of the Broad Institute. It's a nice, a nice genome viewer that we, that we like to use. And this is what Top Hat data look, look like in this format. So here we have... Um, here we have the actual read alignments. So these little arrow things are reads. Uh, these little uh, flags um, indicate um, sequence variation of various types. And this is a coverage map that shows you the density of read alignments. This is, this is a reference annotation or a reference gene model for this particular gene. Um, and, and these are the three uh, bed files. One is deletions, one's insertions, and one's junctions. Now the deletions, insertions, they can, they can actually reflect um, uh, actual variation in the, in, 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 the, in the sequence if we're, not look, if we're looking at a different strain. Uh, most of them are probably just going to be sequencing errors because they're short reads um, and we're tolerating up to two mismatches by default. Um, uh, although if you're looking for um, SNPs, for example, and that's, that's maybe uh, out of context a little bit for this, uh, those might show up if, let's say, half of your reads had, one, had a G in, in one position and ha other half had an A, that could be a SNP. But, but we're not doing variant uh, detection here. We're doing um, transcriptome analysis. So the one we really care about is the splices. So, we, so, we, so to reconstruct um, the, the messenger RNA, we need to have good solid evidence uh, for splice data. And, th and we, in this, this particular example, we have very solid evidence because um, we have a ton of reads that are all, that are all uh, uh, bisected by by these, these introns. And so this is good solid evidence with, with full coverage uh, for this transcript, uh, except for the ends of the UTRs, which might be a little off, or maybe they, the, the UTRs were detected under different uh, conditions. So then we go to cufflinks, and cufflinks uses the, uses the, uh, the splice data, and it uses the, um, the quantity of, of aligned reads and the position of the aligned reads to reconstruct transcripts and make inferences about their abundance. So after cufflinks runs, recall we're, we're comparing two different uh, uh, samples here, two different genetic backgrounds, because we want to compare 
what the different expression patterns are between um, wild type seedlings and seedlings which are not expressing the gene for high fi the high five transcription factor to see what differences there are in the transcriptomes in these two conditions. Uh, uh, for, be for scientific best practices, um, which is something that you have to be sensitive to if you want to actually publish your work, uh, we're doing biological replicate analyses. So there's two, two as a minimum. Um, uh, some people say three is, is the best practice, but basically you need to do biological replicates for each of your experimental conditions. Uh, so there are two conditions, uh, four total sequencing runs for two replicates each. And that's where cuff merge comes in. Um, so, uh, so when we are actually using a reference transcript for the, for the, di for the differential expression analysis, rather than, rather than taking the ensemble's generic transcriptome, uh, that's the annotated transcriptome for Rabidopsis, um, uh, we want something a little bit more specific. And the reason for that is, um, is uh, if we focus in on the, uh, the uh, empirical or observed transcriptomes, in this particular set of experiments, um, then we're going to have um, uh, a better um, resolving power because we might actually be seeing uh, rare transcripts that are not annotated or, or who, uh, who, who are more important in this particular uh, uh, experiment. Or there may be novel transcripts. Um, there may be, for example, um, uh, let's say there are, there's a gene that has two splice variants and in wild type, one splice variant predominates, and then in high five, another splice variant predominates, and things like that. So that's why it's a good idea to focus in on the empirical transcriptomes for this step. That's the, that's the scientific rationale for using cuff merge. Um, and and, and uh, if you, if you, if you uh, Google cuff merge, there's quite a lot of discussions on seek answers and things like that, and Cole Trapnell weighs in, weighs in on these discussions and things like that for, 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 for a more uh, illuminated um, discussion of this. Um, but there's also a practical consideration, um, and this is one of my war stories uh, as, as an integrator of these tools, is that, it, is that right now um, with the current uh, tuxedo package, if you don't use cuff merge to generate your annotation for cuff diff, uh, things break downstream. Because uh, there's certain tags uh, that are necessary in the annotation file which you don't typically find uh, when you download them from NCBI or from UCSC genome browser or from Ensemble, and the, uh, these are transcription SART tags and protein ID tags. And, and, and another thing is if you don't have CDS con uh, coding sequence features in your annotation file, it breaks one little piece of cuff diff, which doesn't impact the output of that, but it breaks cummer cummerbund downstream. So right now, uh, cuff merge is not optional. It's a mandatory part of the workflow, or else you're not going to be able to draw your plots later. Um, Okay, so we're running cuff merge. This is making our final transcriptome assembly, and this is our reference for cuff diff. So what cuff merge does is it takes all of the different um, transcripts, uh, uh, sorry, the different transcriptomes from our four our four experiments, compares them all to one another, merges them into one file, and also uses the reference transcriptome for the same reasons I described earlier. Does a graceful merge. Uh, so that if things overlap with a known transcript, it makes a note of that. Okay, so now we're running cuff diff. And cuff diff uh, is in many ways similar to cuff links. It does the same things. It does the transcript assembly and quantification, but it also does a comparison. Um, and uh, it, uh, in order to um, be able to compare uh, different transcriptomes, which are derived from different sequencing runs, uh, it does a couple of things. First of all, it, it merges the replicates uh, but the, but the, the differences between replicates are incorporated into the test statistic. Um, it also, uh, it also uh, has a, a setting for a false discovery rate analysis that, 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 that calculates a, um, a second more rigorous p-value called a q-value uh, that takes into account multiple trials. That's the one we're actually interested in. So um, the, the p-value cutoff is 0 0.05 and then the q-value cut, cutoff is much more, much more stringent at 0 0.05, and, and, um, and uh, so that's taken into account. And then we get our differential expression results. And then these are the outputs um, for, for cuff diff. That's not particularly illuminating figure, um, but this is, uh, this is an example of, um, 
of uh, some filtered results. Uh, I'm just going to show you some raw results before I get into that. Okay, so it's not much to look at, and I, I won't spend too much time on it. I just want to talk about a couple of features of this output. Um, this, is, this is a gene expression.diff. So this is expression in genes at the aggregate gene level. So all the, tra all the splice variants are merged into one gene, uh, which, is, which is something that you do want to be cautious about because you have differential expression of isoforms as well. Uh, I've been informed that I'm running late, so I won't go uh, into too much detail, but this is comparison, comparing wild type to high five. Um, it's comparing, um, it's comparing these, these normalized expression levels um, and then giving, giving test statistic a p value and a q value um, and, and then tells you whether it's significant. So you can, there's various things like you can, you can grep on the word yes to find all these significant ones and those sorts of things. Uh, just a quick word on normalization for the uh, FPKM values. FPKM stands for fragment per kilobase per million reads. And there's, so there's two levels of normalization there. The first level is normalization for the length of the transcript. So a transcript that's twice as long is going to have twice as many uh, aligned reads, even if it's uh, at the same expression level. So the first normalization step is fragments per kilobase. And the second normalization step is how many reads are in your total, in your total library. And th so that's, you normalize that by dividing it by a million. So fragments per kilobase per million is a normalized number so that you can compare one library to another. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all the point I wanted to make on that. So there's one of these um, expression difference files for isoforms, for CDS, uh, for transcription start sites, and so on. Uh, so there are, you, there's a few value-added features here. One is that um, it, you get some sorted, uh, sorted data files. Uh, that give the, the, uh, the gene names, um, full change direction, uh, and, and some of the key data, and fills out some of the other stuff that's not so interesting. Um, and these are in a sorted data folder when you run cuff diff. Um, it'll also, uh, it'll also uh, uh, sort, uh, show the only things that are significant according to the test statistic. You may prefer just to use full change as your, as your cutoff. Um, opinions vary on what the best practice is there. And finally, um, it also does do a few global expression plots, just to give you a quick look at what the, uh, what the outcome of the analysis looks like. This is a density plot. So the, the brown one is, is high five, and the blue one is wild type. And you see there is a little bit of difference here. And this is, this is a fairly typical expression uh, pattern. Most of the genes are not expressed. This is, a, this is where the FPKM is zero. And then you see there's a hump of things that are moderately expressed and a tail of things that are highly expressed. Um, this gives you a little bit better example of, uh, of differential expression um, taken globally. And you see here, this is a scatter plot, um, again, on a logarithmic scale. And there's a bit of a left uh, so, or skewness here um, for high five, uh, which, which hints that, uh, that uh, things are downregulated. This is much more obvious when you look at a volcano plot. So the, the x-axis on a volcano plot is a log two of the full change. Um, as you know, uh, a, a, a value less than, less than 1 or, 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 or a down regulation is negative in log 2. Um, a value greater than 1 is positive in log 2. That's why um, you get this sort of volcano plot thing where, it's, where, it's, where there's, it goes in two directions. And the blue ones are significant according to the criteria that we set. And you see that there's a preponderance of down regulated uh, genes in the high 5 genetic background, which is something we expect because it's a transcription factor. And there's also a more complex regulatory cascade involving, involving microRNAs and that sort of thing. So this is the, this is the, the, the first out, output of the experiment. And if you go through the tutorial, you can drill a lot deeper and start looking at individual gene expression and that sort of thing. Uh, but this is the outcome of the analysis in the discovery environment, where you end up with some sorted data tables, some graphs, and also the raw outputs of the, of the, of the CUFDIF um, and other uh, components of the workflow. <coughs> 